Welcome to Insight. Today we're chatting with Liz Murphy, trustee and immediate past president of the board of directors of the Flint Institute of Arts. And Liz has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us of this wonderful institution of the community. Liz, thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. So I'm just so fascinated by the idea of an institution like this centered in Flint that has a long history and that has been supported through a combination of civic engagement of its citizens, business engagement, collectors contributing works. How did you originally get involved with the Flint Institute of Arts? Well, I'm not a native of Flint. I'm actually from Rochester, New York, and I came here to go to what was then General Motors Institute and got my engineering degree there and ended up a few years later coming back as a permanent resident and worked for Buick Motor Division and a number of other institutions in the area. And over that time, my husband and I decided to live in the city limits in a neighborhood. And so we met lots of people who were actively involved in the community and felt that that was the way that you put down roots is you become actively involved. And actually our neighborhood was the cultural center here. And so we would come frequently to the library and the FIA and the Sloan Museum and the uh, performing arts centers. And over time got to meet people who were more actively involved and I was eventually asked to join the board. And it was at the same time as our current director was starting. So it's been 25 plus years ago now. And over that time, we continued to meet more people. And the biggest thing when you're trying to put down roots in the community is you show up, you have to participate in things. And doing that gave us exactly those kinds of experiences and made a very nice hometown for ourselves and our children. And we're able to grow up here. In the middle of this maker society, which was the heartbeat of General Motors and is now generating huge uh, other business opportunities in this region, you have these cultural centers that create these, these uh, connections. Could you talk about the, the role of creativity in your own engineering uh, career and how the existence of art, of, of places of creation was so important to this community and continues to be the, important to the community today? I think we grew as an industrial location here. There were resources that were uh, appropriate for the auto industry and prior to that, the carriage industry growing. But as people in the area became more wealthy, they also had a sense that they needed to create a good environment for the people that lived here. So we had some of those industrial barons who started our park system, which is one of the largest park systems in the community, that started the cultural center, that started the Flint Institute of Arts and the Flint Institute of Music. And the universities as well, and the schools. The, well, and, and, which is now Kettering University, was GMI, my alma mater. And one of the things that, that you and I discussed before the camera started rolling, how your trajectory through these last years, these last decades, has witnessed a change in yourself, in your fellow trustees, and in the institution itself. Sure. Um, 25 years ago, when I first started with the board, I would say that the Flint Institute of Arts was gifted with a beautiful collection, but we didn't have a representation either on the board or in our patrons of the community at large. And when our current director arrived, there was a noticeable push to change that. To so make. John basically, with the board, recognized that some things had to change. So how yes. did that unfold? So a variety of things. Uh, from making our guards recognize that they had a responsibility in being a welcoming uh, unit as well as a, a safety and a protective uh, operation, from making uh, people at our reception desk, welcoming and helpful to our visitors, recognizing that many may be first time visitors that had no idea how to even experience a, a museum. We opened up for many more holiday events that welcomed children and families in large numbers. And we welcomed children's um, school groups 
much more extensively than it had been in the past. Our docent core had much more continuing education in presenting materials to adults and people of art patronage, to children and families having their first experiences here. The art school had many, many more classes presented. Uh, one of the nicest features that I like is that we now have a program for helping high school students develop a portfolio if they're going into arts programs. We have programs for students that are homeschooled to come and have art programs here. You also have students for people who are disabled who yes. previously so had our, been... Um, recognition of um, diversity includes not just race and gender, but age groups and capabilities and countries of origin. So we have a wide variety of definitions. Linguistic groups and yes, so on. of what is community. And one of the things that I find really interesting is this idea of art-driven dialogue. Could you talk a little bit about how exhibitions and how programs here drive dialogue uh, on these topics that then inform how the, uh, the museum and the school evolve? Well, we've had a tremendous variety of exhibitions that I've been able to witness over the years here. Several years ago, we had a marvelous glass exhibition in the summer. It was one of the largest participations of guests that I think we had ever had. That evolved in some of our patrons, recognizing how much interest there was in glass. And now we have a new wing. You start off with an exhibition, you start off with interest. We have a fantastic collection of glass paperweights. Mm -hmm. Would have thought glass paperweights are so fascinating, but they are. It's one of incredible. our most popular features. It's been here for well preceding my time uh, active with the Art Institute. And children and families and collectors love these to the point that we have several times changed how those many pieces are available for people to come in. And you have a maker tradition here mm -hmm. in the Flint area, and you, you're bringing together engineering and physics and material sciences yeah. and so on all together. This is interesting. How do you get from there to today where, where you have this, this, this place that is actually hosting artists mm -hmm. who are creating works, and then some of those works, the, the more simple ones, are actually appearing in your shop, right? Yes. Well, I wouldn't say they're simple. There, are, Many of them are pretty complex pieces. We have a lot of talent in the area and amongst our staff. But to answer your question as to how it evolved, and I would say evolved is a good term for this because it wasn't an overnight kind of change. It wasn't where we had an exhibition and then suddenly we were looking at it. And it wasn't stage. one person's brilliant idea. No, it was a community. It, and it, it took quite a while and that there was interest in this and then collectors started asking about it. it. Some pieces started showing up in some of our collector shows. And so these evolved over time. And when a specific donor had an interest in doing this, it evolved into a wing and then a collection. And then, well, if we're going to do that, we should have some learning experiences and then the hot shop and then the um, fine detail, flame work uh, uh, laboratory. And so these things Things have all expanded. And then one of our banking institutions has been a sponsor for the hot shop. And so there are open exhibitions for people to come each weekend. It's about today. It's about making today. It's about hands-on work. All of a sudden, you're inviting in a whole other group to create a new tradition that in 20 years from now will be studied yes. by that generation. That's exactly right. And it's not limited to just being accessible to the community around Flint or Genesee County. This is a unique experience for people from across Michigan and across the Midwest. Uh, it's something that people will come to see and it's been experienced in our numbers. Even during the slowdown these past couple of years, there's still a lot of buzz about the things that go on at the Art Institute. It's a still an interesting place for people to come. So is this Art Institute a community development asset? Is it, a, is it an economic development asset for this region? It's not the kind of thing that shows up in the 
hard numbers that a uh, business would make a, in making a determination. Mm -hmm. But it is the kind of place that when people come to visit the community, one of the first places that outside visitors are brought is to the FIA. It's always beautiful. It's always changing. It's always open and welcoming. And so it sets a tone of the community. And this is something that we want to maintain. There is an expectation that the Flint Institute of Arts is always going to have something cool going on. If it's our movies or our lectures or the art school or a new exhibition or a, a gala or a, an outside event, there's always something going on here. You can reliably come to the Art Institute and have a grand time. Do you feel that there's going to be um, kind of an attitude that whoever comes in is not John Henry, right? Is there going to be a difficulty of somebody coming in and following in those footsteps? And, and how do you think that the community is ready for the, the, the transition to a different leader, um, a leader who is not the same person that has just served here for so long? Well, John obviously has done a marvelous job with the Flint Institute of Arts, and I personally will be very sorry to see him retire. However, any place that I have ever worked or lived has always had change. And one of the most healthy indications of an institution is being able to manage change. And so having new leadership come in needs to be viewed as an opportunity for excitement and revitalization and new directions. And one of the things that I think the board in particular and our patrons and the community at large can do is welcome that new person and support their ideas and help them become part of the community. No person's transition ever goes perfectly. It's just not the way of the world. But supporting the person coming in and the decision of the board and sticking with that person, I think is very important to making a smoother transition for them. They will have ideas that will probably be shocking because we haven't thought of something like that over time. And it will be a credit to us if we say, let's go. Uh, but there is such excitement and such embrace of this idea of being surprised. Mm -hmm the director who is departing. I mm -hmm. think he's excited as anyone to see what a successor to his ideas might bring that's new. Yes, I would agree with that. And I think we've had a lot of not so great news come out of Flint over the last several decades, probably starting in the 70s with the oil crisis. Flint was very General Motors dependent. And so the thing was, if Flint or if General Motors catches a cold, Flint gets pneumonia, basically. I think there was a larger version of that for the country as a whole, but that's really what happened here. And so there was oil embargo times, and then there was high inflation, and then there was departure of GM, and then there was water crisis. And so bit after bit has hit Flint. But to have new opportunities and new directions. Liz Murphy, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your insights with us. You're very welcome.